Come, let us worship the Lord. Come on, come on, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. Come on, if you're able, if you're willing, and if you're able, stand on your feet. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Come on, let me hear some hand claps. Stop your feet. Do something. Make some kind of noise. Make some kind of noise. Make some kind of noise. They said on a certain day, after the horn and the trumpet sound, all the the walls of Jericho just Hallelujah. fell down. Come on and make some noise to our Heavenly Father. Oh, I tell you, I'll say it once again. I've said it before and I'll say it once again. I'm so glad that, that man, that God doesn't judge us the way that man judges us. In Jesus' name. Well, welcome this morning on this May 28th in the year of our Lord, 2023. We welcome you this morning and as you're on your feet, go ahead and Open up with me on the inside of your page, your call to worship for today. We're going to start this thing off right. Invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit to dwell within us and remain with us throughout the day as we come to worship the Lord and give him the praise. My, my, my. I'm starting to feel, <laughs> I'm starting to feel good today. Mm. 
Yes. Yes, that's all you have to do is just open your mouth and say thank you. The word of God speaks for itself. It will not come back void. So all you got to do is open your mouth. Don't be afraid to say thank you. Don't be afraid to give him the praise. Don't be afraid to give credit where credit's due. When you do something good, you want somebody to say something to you. So he has done all that he could do. Bible says that he, I, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop in a minute. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He did what he had to do. Come, let us worship the Lord. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. Our call to worship for this morning. I will be the officiant, you will be the congregation. And it, it goes as such. <laughs> my, my, my. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pest. Pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. I got to say that again. How can something fall right by your side but it will not come near you. It says a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have, Lord, your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious and everlasting Father, first of all, Lord, regardless of what's going on in our lives right now, we pause. to say thank you. thank you. We pause to recognize you for your goodness. We pause to recognize you for your grace. We pause to recognize you, Heavenly Father, for your mercy, your patience, and your understanding. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Heavenly Father, we realize at this moment right now, whether here or uh, out online within every corner and crack behind every door, that's opened up in the name of Jesus. It doesn't necessarily have to be a church for your door to be opened up in the name of Jesus. We thank you for being present all over. My Alpha and my Omega. The beginning and you will be the end, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you. And we ask that you just continue to be with us. Be with us here. Be with us online whomever may be watching, whoever's not watching, Heavenly Father, just, just throw your wind right on through, Heavenly Father. Touch each and every individual. Heavenly Father, we thank you. And we ask that you continue to be patient on this day and allow and accept 
the praise that we give to you today in honor of your Lord and Savior, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you've done, and we ask, and we know that you are here, right here with us, that you accept our praise, accept our prayer. If there's anything in thy sight that's unpleasing to thee, forgive us, Lord. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for allowing us to be who we are and to be where we are right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Fall fresh. Where? 
up again. Oh, look again. Get back up again. Get back, Get back up, up again. again. Get back up again. Get back, Get back up, up again. again. Get back up 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 again. Go on, sing it, up again for our Savior is just a sinner who has fallen down and on that note I'd like to take a second just a moment to tell you a little bit about tomorrow as we know, we celebrate Memorial Day. And though a lot want to thank the veterans that we have present, which we do and we appreciate, but the fact is, Veterans Day and remembrance of Veterans Day or for Veterans Day is another day. Actually, tomorrow is if you think about it, to one who has lost someone, Memorial Day is a sad day. We have actually commercialized it so much, myself included, barbecue, get together, have a good time. We use that as a, as a I'll say it as an excuse just to do whatever we want to do. It's Memorial Day. But in all honor, Memorial Day, is designated to specifically honor those who died in service to our country. Veterans Day in November is considered a celebration to all American military veterans living and dead. So we just want to take that second to remember our fallen heroes. A savior is just a sinner who fell down. We remember at this time our fallen heroes. In Jesus' name. Thank you. And we welcome you this morning at this 28th day of May to Alden Baptist 649 649 State Street, right here in Springfield, Mass. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Lay Love, and the Alden Baptist Church family, we welcome you in-house and wherever you may be watching online and however you may be watching us online.
tag, subscribe, tag someone, let someone know. Do what you normally do during the week. The phone up, call somebody and say, hey, all is on. You know that's what we do. We welcome you this morning in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if we have anyone with us for the first time, would you mind to just, would you mind raise your hand? I see, I see familiar faces. I see familiar faces. I see you online, maybe waving your hand or whatever. In the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you can subscribe. You can put a little something in the note. Let someone know that you're out there and uh, we will get back with you. Someone will get back with you in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, get this together. Now it's the time that we can all participate in uh, giving. God's hand is always on us, and because his hands are always on us, we, uh, it's giving time. Come on down, let's just. By giving, we put our love to God before money. Something I was looking at by paying our tithes and our offerings, seven benefits to giving. Giving makes us more like God. For he has given to us everything. He has given to us everything. God draws us closer. Giving draws us closer to God. Giving is the antidote to materialism. My, my, my. You mean I got to give this up? I don't work so hard for this? Well, who made this possible for you to work? But giving, giving, getting rid of that materialism. Giving strengthens our faith. Giving is an investment for eternity. Giving blesses us in return. And you know what? Giving just darn right makes us happy and paying your tithes because we're doing the right thing for his love for us. Let me pray right now in advance for our giving. If you're online, something is going to come across the screen. It should have come across the screen, let you know the certain ways that you can give. In the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for the gifts that come forward, either through here, 6th State Street, or through our avenues of Give the Fly and so forth online. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that you loved us so much that you gave up your son, that all we have to do is just give up a little bit of what you've provided for us give back to you so that you may give back to us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the giver. We thank you for those who are unable to give. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you thanks. Amen. Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited. Go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. King of Kings. Get all excited, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited, go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. Get all excited and go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited and go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited and Tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Please stand.
How many know that the battle is not ours? It's the Lord's. Amen? Amen. Yes. There's no pain. Jesus can be no heart. He cannot heal. All things work according to the master. going through remember that God is only using you for the battle is not yours it's the Lord there's no sad Jesus can feel, and there's no sorrow he cannot heal. For all According to the master's holy will, and no matter what you're going through, remember God is using you for the battle. Listen, and no matter what you go. 
It's not yours. It's not yours. Amen. How many of you really know that the battle you're going through, it's not yours. It is the Lord's. Amen. What an on-time song. We thank God for your presence, both physically and virtually in this place this morning. I just have a couple <clears throat> announcements before we get into the word. Nephew, take me up just a little bit, <clears throat> if you can, please, sir. Um, immediately after the service, if I can see Avazion, Emilio, Willette, and Lou right out here before my office immediately after the service. Avazion, Emuriel, Lou, and Willette. And then I want to make the public announcement. On the fourth Sunday of June, we will be transitioning our services out of the large sanctuary into our multi-purpose fellowship hall. Amen. With the summer months that are coming, and many of you who will be taken off for vacation, it seems appropriate that we'll shift, amen, to a more conducive area of worship. So Sunday, June 25th, will be our first worship service in our fellowship hall. 
So meet us downstairs at 10 o'clock. Amen. Bring the same spirit of worship. And we're going to have a good time in a cool environment. Fans will be gone. So if you get cold, please bring your shawl. Because pastor don't want to be sweating. Amen. Out of his clothes. June 25th, fourth Sunday in June, right after the celebration of Father's Day, we're shifting our services to our multi-purpose fellowship room. Please, please tell your pew partner, please get the word out. As today is Fort Sunday, it's usually our birthday fellowship Sunday, as has been announced and the notifications went out throughout this week and last week. We will not be celebrating today. I know we have many May birthdays. Amen. That doesn't mean we don't like you. We don't love you. Amen. We just need a little bit more time to celebrate you. So we're going to combine, as you know, May and June, all of May and June birthdays together on the second Sunday of June, which is also Memory Sunday. We have a guest presentation, a guest speaker, one of our own and beloved, who will be joining us after service. So Sister Pamela Pamela Lumpkin has assured me we're going to ensure to heighten up that celebration so that May birthdays don't feel left out. Amen. We're going to include May and June together on Sunday, June 11th, uh, immediately after service. Speaking of birthdays, on today, I'm told that we have at least two birthdays today alone. Uh, Sister Mick, uh, Morgan Bostick, our college amen young lady who worships with us as a part of our family. Her birthday is on today. Brother Stephen Warwick turns 21 today. Amen. 21 on today. Amen. That, that's a celebration all within itself when our young black man can make 21. I know that sounds a little bit far-fetched, but it, it's, it's the world that we're living in today. Amen. That you can see a handsome, uh, intelligent young man supported by his family, going places, doing things, celebrating his 21st birthday. Make it a great day, Brother Stephen. Make sure you can remember it. Amen. Make sure you remember it. And lastly, on, uh, lastly, but certainly not least, on yesterday, uh, one of our babies, amen, turned 16 on yesterday, sweet 16, Sister Anicia Love, amen, turned 16 on yesterday. I used to hear it when I was younger, now that I'm a parent, I understand it more, Buford, it, it hits me more when they say time flies. It flies. You're holding them as a newborn, and the next thing you know, you're packing them up and sending them on. Amen. Will you join me in a word of prayer? God, our Father, we thank you this morning for a wonderful atmosphere of worship. God, thank you for these, your people, who you gave strength, knowledge, and understanding to get up and come to your house of worship physically this morning, to those who are worshiping with us virtually, oh God, we thank you for their virtual presence and their spirit in the house. God, before I can even move on, I want to lift up a word of prayer for our families, that those who are sick and in the hospital, those who are riddled with illnesses, God, recovering from procedures, those who are on the highways and byways during this holiday season, God, we pray that you'll continue to wrap your loving arms around them. For those who are in need of a healing, God, we pray that you give them complete healing. Those who are underneath doctor's care, God, we pray your Holy Spirit over those doctors, over the surgeons, over the physicians, over the nurses, over, God, those who are charged with keeping the room clean and sanitize anybody who has any association or affiliation. God, with that patient, we pray right now, God, that you would touch, that they would do what they are called to do in the name of Jesus, so that they make the environment of healing and recovery more conducive. Now, God, be with the patient, God, that they will have enough belief 
to know that you ordered that physician, God, you ordered that nurse, you ordered that procedure all for their good, God, and, and let them rest, oh God, ease their mind, their hearts, and their spirits, God, that while they're laying in the hospital bed, God, will you remind them it's better to be laying in the hospital bed than to be laying in their grave. God, this morning, will you visit them, oh God, every wing of the hospital. God, those who have given up, those who have no one to visit them, would you send your ministering, medical, healing, recovering angels by their bedside? Those who are traveling, God, be their guide, be their steering, be their eyes and their ears. As my mother used to say, oh God, will you touch from the front hood to the trunk, God, from every each opening door, that no hurt, harm, or danger will come their way in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, I feel your spirit. It's preaching time. God, I pray that you would hide me behind thy cross so that no flesh may glory in thy sight. I pray this morning, God, that these your people will see you and not see me. God, I pray that they'll hear your strong voice and not my feeble voice calling them from up on high, beckoning them to a closer relationship with you. God, please let somebody hear your word that who's been wrestling, who's been struggling, God, that to be able to say this day, I stand, if I have to stand all by myself, for Christ I live and for Christ I'll die. Use me, O oh God, as you see fit, and I'll forever give you the glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. Will you join me in Acts chapter 2 on this morning? Acts chapter 2 is where we find ourselves. I know it's Memorial Day, and um, I don't say happy Memorial Day. Uh, I'm going to say may the Lord strengthen you on Memorial Day. Those who have lost, all of us who have lost soldiers defending this country and whatever agency that they served, we want to send strength out to the families. Acts chapter 2. And it's ironic, I'm reminded 22 years ago, Evangelist Gentry, that 23 years ago that I had enlisted into the armed services. And I stepped foot on campus in July for football camp, and 9-11 happened. And I'm reminded every memorial service day that my mother could be celebrating or, or, or be saddened that I could have been one of those soldiers who was fighting for this country. You know, we, sometimes we forget the small things. When we begin to complain, we ought to start complimenting God and thanking him for keeping us out of hurt, harm, and dangerous way. I, I had a plan, but God had an alternate plan for me. I, I heard somebody told me just yesterday, maybe you should have took that call. And I thought about that all yesterday afternoon. I said, no, I went the way God directed me to go. Amen. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 is where we find ourselves. This is not only Memorial Day. This is Pentecost Sunday. This, other than Resurrection Sunday, this Pentecost Sunday ought to be the loudest, the most rambunctious, the most spirit-filled service in the history of the Christian church. This Pentecost Sunday is where we find the foundation of our belief of our Christianity, the foundation of the church. So my brothers and my sisters, I invite you, uh, Deacon Whitmore, to the narrative of the beginning of the New Testament church in Acts chapter 2. We'll start at verse 1. We'll read down to verse 7, maybe verse 8. Amen. I'm reading out a New Living Translation, so it may sound just a little bit different than what you may be holding in your hand. Let us read, on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. When then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone pre present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and 
they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the elders. They, they were completely amazed. How can this be? They exclaimed, these people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Let me take our focal text, focal point of our text this morning, verse 4. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. Before you take your seat, I just simply want you to find somebody, turn to your neighbor. I know we've gotten out of that habit. Turn to your neighbor and just simply tell your neighbor, neighbor, this morning, I want the Lord to fill me with his Holy Spirit. You may be seated in the house of our God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Our text, our, our title, our theme, our subject, our main point this morning is, Lord, I want you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. As quiet as it is kept, everyone is filled with the Spirit. As quiet as it is kept, everyone is filled with a Spirit. As quiet as it is kept, everyone has something that moves them on the inside, that directs how they act, that directs how they live, that directs how they respond, that directs how they react to life situations and circumstances that comes in their life. As quiet as it is kept, you, you know, uh, I know y'all been saved all of your life, but some of us who've ever walked into the liquor store, you'll find that they don't only just have the title of liquor store or package on the window, but when you go down the aisle of these fancy liquor stores, so that I am told, there's, there's a simple word that's broadcasted on, on the ceiling and highlighted in neon lights, and it simply says, spirits. And, and, and that's what drives some of us to, to go and pick up the bottle to drink because we're looking for a spirit to take us out of this pain, to take us out of this situation, something that will take us out of what we are facing, even if just for a moment. As, as, as quiet as it is kept, we all want to be filled with something. I, I, I heard, I, I, for whatever reason, I'm drawn to drunkards. I, I, I have many conversations with those who, who, who struggle with alcohol, and, and their theme that I hear when I talk to them is that I drink because I'm hurting. I drink because I'm trying to mask the pain. I, I drink because there's a situation that happened in my life that I have nightmares about, that I'm still reliving in my mind. I, I, I don't have to drink alcohol, but I drink because I need it to take me out of this rim that I'm living in. And, and, and you do know there's something about a spirit. And, and I don't know about you, there's some people that I'm around that just move my spirit. There's some that you just get around and you have to excuse yourself because there's something about them that brings out the worst in you. Do I have any witnesses? It's, it's not that you don't, you don't, you don't, you, you, you know, we wasn't called to like everybody. I wish I had some. I wish y'all quit putting on faces for folks because you're a Christian. God didn't call you to like everybody. He called you to love them. There's a difference between like and love. And, and if I can't deal with you, I can still love you, but love you from a distance because you got a spirit inside of you that just don't mesh with my spirit. And then, then there are some that you can't wait to get around. You know, you know, you used to go in the back room and play out your cards and poker and pity pad and tonk and, 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 and roll your dice. You know, there's some you can't wait to get around at the family reunion because they got a spirit, amen, of enjoyment. They got a spirit of joy. They got a spirit of having fun. They got a spirit of keeping a smile on your face. You know they always going to have something funny to say. Everybody got somebody that they want to be around because they bring out the best in them. So is the divine discourse of our text this morning. Luke is writing about a group of people who are all together on one accord. The first thing I want to tell you, in order, if you really want God to fill you with your Holy Spirit, the first thing that you must have is belief. 
you must have is belief. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 that they, there was a group who, who were together and they were all on one accord, all in one play. Can I read it to you again? And they were all on one accord and they were all together in one play. Let me hit for the third time. And they, T-H-E-Y, they all were together in one place and on, on, on one accord. Here's what I like about it. I had a, had a little talk with God this week and, and I read this passage every Pentecost Sunday, and it dawned on me this week, Evangelist Gentry, who are the they? <laughs> who are the they that have found the New Testament church? Who are the they that, that were all gathered together? It's right there in your text if you haven't torn it out. It says, and watch this, all of the believers, all of the believers, all, all of them were in one place on one accord. Can, can I break it down to you this morning? You know they say birds of a feather. Birds of a feather flock together. Those who do wrong are going to be around do-wrongers. Those who are righteous are going to be around those who are righteous. Those who love to, to do whatever it is, they're going to be around people who are similar, who have the same spirit about them. Luke is writing, and he said, all of them. And, and the they, watch this, the they are believers. There's something about staying together as believers. Here it is in Acts chapter 2, verse, verse 1. It clearly says, all of the believers, and they all were on one accord. The thing about being on one accord means that they all were in agreement, all in the same place at the same time. My problem with the church today is that can you find just a small remnant who can all be on the same accord, be in agreement at the same time and in the same place? The key to the foundation of the New Testament church is do you have belief? Now, as I did my research, I come to understand that this Pentecost Sunday happened seven weeks, seven Sundays after the Feast of Harvest. Stay with me now. You'll understand that that the Feast of Harvest was celebrating seven weeks of bringing in crops which they had planted prior to in another season. You'll, you'll get with me in a moment. Here, what I'm trying to tell you is that you're going to go through a season in your life where you have to till the ground. You're going to go through a season in your life where it gets hard sometime. You're going to go through a season in your life where you're going to question, is what I'm doing worth it? Will I see some kind of uh, return on my investment? But, you know, Pentecost, is that's what that is. That's a return on your investment. Because the Feast of Harvest was seven weeks of gathering that which you had planted during the hard planting. See, come on, Maddie, you a, you a flower person. You you understand when you plant the flower, you don't necessarily get the flower at the same time that you plant it. You got to till the ground. You got to fertilize it. You got to water it. You got to work it. Every now and then it hurts your fingers. Your back begin to hurt because you're pulling out weeds and you're removing things that may choke the life out of it. But when the right time at the right place in due season, the harvest comes. Here's where all of the believers began to get their harvest. I'm getting happy already uh, because, Sister Sydney, what that means is just because we're on the same accord doesn't mean we're all believing for the same thing. But what makes us on the same accord, what makes us in agreement is that we're all at least we believe in. And if you want God to fill you with the Holy Spirit, you got to maintain the belief that even during hard times, God is still God. Even when I can't see my way through, God is still God. When I got no food on my table, God is still God. When I got to bury my child, God is still God. When I got to bury my mama, when I got to bury my daddy, when I got to bury my husband, when I got to bury my wife, God is still God. What holds us all together is our belief. What I like about this is that when you understand agriculture, 
you understand not everybody plants the same thing. Whew. I'm getting happy all by myself. You understand, Lou, when you and I go back to Arkansas and y'all pass them rows, amen, of, 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 of fields of agriculture, which means nothing to you as a city girl. But to Al, he understands that that's a harvest field, that something's out there that's going to feed me. Minister Gentry can testify that I'm so glad that not everybody plants the same thing because not everybody wants to eat corn and, and tomatoes and okra. Everybody ought to have something different. What I'm trying to tell you is that the reason why the Bible says forsake not the fellowship of, watch this, not just men, not just women, but forsake not the fellowship of believers. Because when you bring your belief and you match it with my belief and we get Sister Sally's belief and we get Brother Johnson's belief and we put it all together, we might not be believing for the same thing. But what ties us together, baby, that we got belief. You may be believing for healing. I may be believing for an economic breakthrough. Somebody else may be believing that their child will come off of drugs. Somebody else may be believing that God will lift a dead church. Somebody else will be believing that God will heal my body. Somebody else will be believing whatever it is, but when you bring it all together, something whoo, begins to happen. Whoo, he said, they all were believers. Deke asked me a question yesterday. Do you believe? It rattled my mind, rattled my heart, rattled my spirit all day yesterday. I said, Lord, I believe. I believe you still can do the impossible. I believe you can do anything but fail. God, I believe that you can take, matter of fact, come here, Lazarus, who was dead. Didn't nobody think he would live again? I wish I had somebody. But God spoke a word, called him by his name, Lazarus. And every Lazarus that had been dead began to rise up out of the grave. He said, no, I need Lazarus from Bethany. All that means to tell you is that God has a specific resurrection if you just believe. Here's the text, deacons. The church was founded, maintained, and sustained off of belief. It don't matter where it is. I struggled, Reverend Avazion, because I couldn't get many theologians to, degree, to agree exactly where they were. Some ascribe this text to the temple. The word says the house. Other theologians, you don't know exactly where they were. All you know is that they were there. Wherever the there is, matter of fact, it says where two or three are gathered together in my name. There in the midst will I be. Can you see them in the upper room? Hey Amen. One, two, three, forty, fifty, two hundred. Can you see? The Bible says every nation was represented because they all were on one accord. If I take the opposite of this, it tells me that those who don't believe can't get on the same accord. Can you deduce that from the text? That's the inverse. Huh? That when you don't believe, that's why the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable. In what? All of his ways. What happens when you put two and three double-minded people together? The whole house just comes, come tumbling down. He says, and they all, who were they all? Who were the they? They were the believers. In order for the Lord to fill you with his Holy Spirit, you must believe. You must find you at least one somebody who's going to agree. Watch this. Touch and agree with you in belief. That's why it's important, Mother Wilson, that we got to bring back prayer meetings. <laughs> That's why it's important that, that even if nobody else shows up, if you show up, if the pastor shows up, where two or three are together in agreement, 
In my name, there will I be in the midst. That, that's why we got to bring back testimony service. <laughs> Where two or three are gathered. To, all it takes is just you, me, and the Holy Spirit. I wish I had just a couple of witnesses to say that my situation was dark. It was down. It was dismal. But I still believed. I got down on my knees. Didn't know if I would ever get back up. But I still believe. I called somebody and said, will you be in agreement with me? We're going to pray over Sister Sally. You pray. I pray. And we'll let the Holy Spirit pray. Is there a witness in the house that said, when I believe, God began to turn things around. God, I need you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I know the only way you can do that if I maintain my belief. Watch this. When you begin to believe without a shadow of a doubt, when, 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 when you begin to believe, I just, I just believe that while they were in the upper room, while, while they were having a prayer, they weren't just gathering to gossip. I wish I had somebody. They, they weren't just gathering to tell everybody's business. They weren't there to gather for a sorority meeting. They weren't there to gather for a fraternity meeting. They, they weren't there to just gather. They were there to have an intense, mo intense encounter with God. And when they begin to put their belief together, evangelical ministry, something happened. Can I call your attention to verses 2 through 4? The Bible says, while they were believing. I, I really need you to get this. All of them were believing. From the pulpit to the pew. From the parishioner to the pastor. It deduces to say, if you just have one somebody around you who do not believe, one bad apple can spoil, preach it, mother, can spoil the whole bunch. Be careful who you have around you when you're believing for God to do something. You can't call everybody in the church to help you get to your miracle. Because just because they're in the church don't mean the church is in them. <laughs> Belief. Verses 2 through 4, the next thing you need to know when God pours you, in order for God to pour his Holy Spirit into you, and you really desire God to do something uh, out of the normal, after your belief becomes, the Bible says, a bestowing. A bestowing. In other words, conferring. God confirmed his Holy Spirit, and all of those who were, watch this, believing and on one accord in one place. It says, suddenly. It says, suddenly. You, 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 you know, you know, Lou, when we spread out the financial report and it don't look good, we close our eyes. Have you ever tried this, Lou? Uh, saturate your hands with some holy oil. Lay your hands on the financial report and begin to believe. Because while you're believing and praying and praising, the Bible says suddenly <laughs> something happens, something moves, a sound begin. They begin to hear a sound like a mighty rushing wind. <laughs> when you know the Holy Spirit is in your life, uh, the next indicator is that you'll begin to feel and hear some things. You, you, you'll be like, as if a spider or something was on you, you'll be like, something is on me. You, you look around and ask somebody, Sister Venus, did you hear that? Uh, I'm hearing something. Did you hear that? The psalmist says, be still and know that I am, I am God. Sometimes in our belief, after we get done praise and after we get done praying, we just got to sit still. And while we are sitting still in our own room with two, three, four, fifty, sixty, or a hundred folks, suddenly something 
will happen. Mother Wilson, have you ever been praying? <laughs> and after you got through praying, you just sat there and you meditated and marinated in the Spirit of God. And suddenly God showed you something that the very thing that you were praying for, God said, I got it. Go to sleep. Uh, peace, be still. Good night, Jimmy Wilson. Baby, I'll see you in the morning. Is there anybody who can testify that God will confer upon you peace that surpasses all understanding? God will anoint you. God will bestow so God will confirm everything that you are asking, everything that your heart desires. All you got to do is believe, sit still, and watch him bestow. Suddenly, while they are believing, the Holy Spirit begins to move. It says like a sound of a mighty rushing wind. Linda Duncan, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you can hear some things that other folks can't hear. I'm messing with my country boys today, Al and, and Bobby. You know I'm a country boy. When you sit out in the country, those who are not from the country, Maddie, they, they wouldn't have a clue. But you can tell, Buford, by the change of the atmosphere. I used to hear the elders say, I smell rain. I wish I had somebody. <laughs> when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, God will give you such a, a vision. He'll give you, increase your spiritual hearing. He'll increase your spiritual eyesight. He'll increase all of your senses so you'll be able to say, I smell something. I feel something. Oh, I done heard something. Oh, I wish I had somebody. It sounds like a thunder in the clouds. It sounds like a mighty rushing wind is happening. But I heard somebody said, I heard the sound of thunder rushing in like a mighty powerful wind. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, God will always give you an indication that, baby, I'm right here with you. Old Baptist preacher said, I've heard the thunder roll, and I've seen the lightning flashing, sin breakers dashing, trying to take over my soul. I wish I had somebody this morning, and Luke is writing, he's telling us that while we are filled with the Spirit, that you ought to be able to feel it, you ought to be able to hear it, but watch this, you ought to be able to make a sound yourself. Because when God gets inside of you, come here, Jeremiah. He said, it's as if it's fire shut up in my bones. And while fire was shut up in their bones, Maddie, the Bible said those who were on the outside begin to come. They were drawn to what was going on on the inside. You want to know how to rebuild a church? If God has done anything for you, whatever he has done, whatever you have done, and whatever he has done, there ought to be a mighty sound in the atmosphere that spills out of the sanctuary all the way down State Street, going down the highways, headed towards North Hadley, headed towards Amherst, headed back towards Connecticut. Somebody ought to be able to witness. Somebody ought to be able to hear that God has filled my life with his Holy Spirit. I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't sit still. Yeah, I, I can't keep my mouth closed. Baby, you don't know what God has done for her. Yeah, just because you can't get with it, don't, don't, don't stifle her spirit. I remember back in the day, somebody caught the Holy Ghost, and here come the ushers want to set them down. No, get out the way, because the Bible says those who are in the spirit are subject to the spirit, and the spirit will never allow you to hurt yourself if you're in the right spirit. Do I help, do I help somebody this, this morning? God bestow upon me. You ought to feel it, and you ought to hear it. In other words, somebody ought to see the Holy Spirit in you. Somebody ought to hear it coming out of your mouth. You cannot, it's, it's, it's immutable. You cannot shut it up, you cannot shut it down, and you cannot be for shut it out. What I like about it is in verse 4 it says, oh, I like this. I might step on some toes, but it's in your Bible. Verse 4, it didn't say the pastor. <laughs> it didn't say the ushers. It didn't say the musicians. It didn't say the young folks. 
It didn't say the deacons. Sure enough, just don't say the mothers. What does it say? It said everyone who was present. That means there's something valuable when we come together. That means that our church is not whole when we're missing some folk. Because I want them to experience the same experience that I'm having. I want them to be endowed with the Holy Spirit just like I'm endowed. Everyone who was present was filled. Can, can I mess with you right quick? Can I mess with you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've gotten to a place before where parents are debating whether to bring their children to church. And I hear it. Y'all beat me up all the time. Pastor, where are the young folks? And I turn to you and say, well, I see their parents at service. Why the kids ain't at service? I grew up in a day that even when my parents didn't go to church, they put us on an old little raggedy red van when the missionaries would come around the neighborhood. And they said, can we have your boys and can we take them to church? I wasn't too excited, but when Sister Patty Zimmerman, I never forget her name, told my mother, she said, we'll feed them and we'll bring them back to you. The only thing I heard was, we'll feed them. I looked up at my mama and said, please, can I go? Uh, but as young as I was, only thing I was thinking about was the physical food. <laughs> I didn't understand that Reverend Joel Strickland would preach a word <laughs> that would jump in my heart, that would settle my spirit. And uh, another missionary by the name of Sister Muncy will, will, will prophesy over me at the age of four years old and tell me, you're going to do great works for the Lord. All I was focused on, Sydney, was something to eat, a hamburger in my mouth. Give me some french fries or something. But the missionary knew that God had another menu in mind. He knew that the Spirit of the Lord, I wish I had somebody, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me. And that's, that's what happens when you are present in the house of the Lord with other group of believers. I, I know virtual is good, but there's nothing like coming together when all folks are on the same page, praising and praying and worshiping God. He says that's when the Holy Spirit falls. And while you're saying amen, then let me pull you to the other side. The reason why the Holy Spirit fell is because they all were believing, they all were praying. Oh, I'm about to step on your toes. And they all were praising. They all were believing. They all were praying. And they all were praising. Oh, oh, oh y'all went to sleep on me. All right, Lou. They all were believing. They all were praying. They all were praising. It's your belief that will move you to prayer. And in your prayer, your prayer will move you to praising. What you don't understand about praising is that you can never have a praising without a raising. God Almighty. <sighs> Ah, the reason why they caught on fire is because their praising allowed God to raise them to another level. You know you've been filled with the Holy Spirit when the Spirit has raised you to another level. Those who you want to cuss out, you embrace. Those who you want to push away, you, you embrace. Those who you want to talk about, you pray for. Those who you want to stump down, you lift up. Those who you got something bad to say about, you praise. God's praising will allow you to raise yourself to the next level so that nobody can say she's still the same old crump. Nobody can say she's still the same old Maddie. Nobody can say he's still the same old Buford. Because when I begin to believe, I begin to pray. When I begin to pray, I begin to praise. And while I'm praising, God is raising me to the next level. That's, that's why that's why I want him to fill me with his Holy Spirit. So that I can be raised. And lastly, as I go to my seat, you know you've been filled not only by your belief, 
not only by the bestowing, because here's what bestowing does. It draws folks. The Bible says, and I, and if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. What you don't realize in the text on Pentecost Sunday it was that they were lifting up Christ. And while they were lifting up Christ, Christ was drawing all men unto him. Yes, verse 7, verse 6, verse 7, and verse 8. And I'm out of here now, y'all. It said, while they were praising, while the Holy Ghost had filled them, a, bewilder a bewilderment fell upon the crowd. Those who were outside began to press their way to the place. And they began to say, these folks are drunk. I don't understand how can they be speaking as Galileans in these languages that are unbeknownst to them. And, and that's my third point, y'all, before I get out of here, is that you know you've been filled with the Holy Spirit when God allows bewilderment to happen all around you because now your life has been changed. They say, no, that drunkard cannot now be a deacon. That, that whole God could not have cleaned up. That drug addict God could not have saved. Y'all know some of our names they used to give us. That's what bewilders people, that when Christ comes into my life, I got a new walk. <laughs> I got a new talk. I got a new heart. I got a new spirit. I got a new dance. Come here, David. The Bible says that David danced before the Lord. He danced so hard that his linen ephod fell off. And that woman said, boy, you must be crazy. And I can just imagine in my mind that David says, woman, do you not know what he has done for me? He's held off all of my enemies. When I should have been dead, he allowed me to live. Is there anybody in in the house that can say God bewildered folks around me because he picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet back on solid ground. That's what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I love it. 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 That's what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit is that you've got love in your heart. You want to see all folks do good. You want to see all folks do right. You want to see all things be turned around for the good, for the uplifting of Christ's kingdom. I, I want to be filled. He says, wow. 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 Wow, they were praising. Oh, God. They begin to speak uh, in languages. Yeah, yeah. We let, that's how you know that the Spirit is in you. Because your language changes. You, the, the, have you ever heard of the five love languages? Dr. Gary Chapman, world-renowned, travels the world, has written many books, many seminars, and he says everybody has a love language. And he just didn't get that out of his mind. He got that out of the Word. Because God said when the Holy Spirit fell, their language changed. <laughs> and that's what confused folks. Because how can the same tongue that once cursed folks now bless them? Here's what I like about the beef is that the ones who came running weren't the believers. They were the unbelievers. And the reason why it confused them is because they could also understand the language that was spoken. Went right over you. When the church is filled with the Holy Spirit, the language that it speaks will touch those who are lost and bring them to Christ. That's why you got to be careful sitting in your pew with your arms crossed and your legs crossed as if Jesus has never done nothing for you. That's why we have to be careful sitting there as if we were dead and they had glue on our lips. That's the reason why we have to be careful of not being able to lift up our hands and lift up our head and open up our mouth. 
Because there may be some visitor in the house. There may be some guest in the house. There may be an unbeliever in the house. And your belief, your bestowing, I wish I had somebody, and the bewilderment of what God has done for you will pull them closer to the cross. I said this story before. There was a mother who had went shopping. And you know how black mothers are. They said, now, we're going to this store. Don't ask me for nothing. I ain't got no money. I see you smiling. It brings back remembrances. <laughs> I only got enough to come get what I came for. The problem is, as kids, we don't listen. There's something on the inside of us that just fuels us, and it just bewilders our parents. Mother gets done schooling the kids. She looks back at Johnny, because every parent always has a Johnny in the group. Johnny looks up with big eyes and nods yes, but you know in his spirit, he gonna do the opposite of what you tell him. Mother gets out the car, with her seven children. Gets out, goes into the store, and before you know it, Johnny takes off. Mother goes, purchases what she needs to purchase, gets in the car, puts the car in drive, and goes back to the house. Before she knows it, she gets back to the house, and like a mother duck, she's counting her children. And Linda, she notices that Johnny is missing. By the time she gathers the kids back up, puts them back in the car, puts the car in drive, heads back to the store, the store has closed. It's dark on the inside. She's knocking to see if anybody's in there. The security guard can see her, can let her in, and nobody seems to notice that she's knocking. Nobody's there. Tears begin to flow down her eyes. She gathers the rest of the six of her kids, puts them back in the car, puts the car in drive, goes back to the house, takes them to the bedroom and falls down on her knees. And she begins to pray. God, will you please cover Johnny? God, wherever he may be, will you please bring him back home safely to me? She believes in her heart that God will hear her prayer. While she is praying, something on the inside of her comes over her, and her praying begins to move from prayer to praise. While she is praising, the security guard inside of the store finds a little boy on the back aisle who had engulfed himself with the toys. He looks at the little boy and he said, why or how did you get here? Johnny looks up at the security officer and said, my mama left me. The security guard says, well, do you know your phone number? The little boy says, no, I don't know my number. He says, do you know your address? He says, no, I don't know your address. He says, do you know anybody that we can contact? The little boy says, no. I don't know anybody. The security guard says, how are we going to get you home? Johnny says, well, by my house is an old rugged cross. He said, down the street from that cross is where I live. He said, sir, if you can just put me in the car, I can lead you to the church. And if you can get me to the church, I can lead you to the cross. And if you can get me to the cross, I know my way home. Is there anybody in the house today that I can be like Johnny and say, if you can just get me to the cross, I'll find my way home. It's at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the wellness of my heart rolled away. That's how you know that you've been filled with the Holy Spirit because it's at the cross that while you're lifting up Jesus, that Jesus will invite you to come on home and have a 
little closer relationship with him. Is there anybody here that can say, I got a new walk, I got a new talk, because I've been filled with the Holy Ghost in my life. Is there anybody here that can say he walks with me, he talks with me, he tells me that I am his own? Is there anybody here that can say while I was believing, while I was praying, while I was praising that God turned it around? Is there here that can lift up a hand and begin to praise God. And as you begin to praise, watch how God raise you up. Is there anybody in the house that don't mind giving God a shout of praise on this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I've been filled. I've been filled. I've been filled. And when you're running, when you're running on empty, that's your prayer. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, fill me back up. Put love back in my heart. Don't let me grow bitter. Let me grow better. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. My brothers and my sisters, do you believe? Do you believe that God's pouring out in your life can turn some things around. Deacon Whitmore, it wasn't until they believed. It wasn't until they was filled. It wasn't until their praise that the church began to grow. It wasn't no children's program. It wasn't no two and three services on Sunday. Huh? It wasn't until they started believing. All on one accord. It wasn't until they start praying. It wasn't until they start praising. It wasn't until the draw of those who did not believe began to come in. I should copyright this because that's the question of every church in the world today. How are we going to make it after COVID? People no longer coming. Nobody's interested in church like they used to. Huh? Just call a prayer meeting. Invite the Holy Spirit in. Combine all of our beliefs together. There used to be a time Evangelist Gentry, I, I know they used to shun you because you have the gift of seeing. You have the gift to be able to touch somebody and see within their heart and their spirit. There used to be a time when the pastor would call a prayer meeting and there was always somebody in the room, almost like Duck, Duck, Goose, that could go around and tell when there was one somebody who was there for the wrong reason and be able to pull them aside. And the prayer meeting didn't take off until that one individual was identified because you cannot mix belief and unbelief together. And so I simply stopped by to my deacons, to my clergy staff, to all of you, my brothers and my sisters. <clears throat> I want to look you dead straight, square in the eye, stand flat-footed and tell you, I still believe. Those of you who are watching and worshiping with us online, we still believe. It may not look like you think it should look, but if you keep believing, 
You keep touching and agreeing. You keep praying. You keep praising. God will do the drawing. Amen. Amen. There may be one in the house this morning. It looked like we're all family. But there may be one in the house this morning who you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior. We invite you to come this morning. We invite you to come accept Jesus into your life and make him your Lord. Is there one? There may be one who's without a church home. You've been coming. You've been visiting, but you haven't made that step to say Alden will be my cover. If that's you, will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Ours to extend. Yours to accept. Yours to reject. Amen. Lord, lift me up. And I shall stand by faith on hand and save a land, a higher place. Just before we leave, to you who are watching with us virtually, we thank you for your virtual presence. We pray God's blessing over you, and at this time, we say bye-bye and good afternoon. For those of you who are worshiping in person, I want to invite you to join me and turn this sanctuary into a house of prayer. Before you walk out of here this morning, I need you to find you at least two to three people. I need you to circle up around this sanctuary. And I need you to begin to touch and agree. Whatever you're believing for, I need you to bring your belief, partner it with somebody else's belief, and begin to pray. Y'all sitting down, y'all looking at me all over this sanctuary right now. I need you to get up, find you two or three people, and I need you to couple your belief. Uh, you don't even have to tell them what you're believing. Just begin to pray in your circle. Just begin to pray. Just, just begin to pray. That whatever you are believing for, that God will turn, God will turn it and bring it to pass. God will turn it and bring it to pass. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to pray. Turn this whole sanctuary into a house of prayer. That God, you will put us all on one accord. <laughs> While we're yet in this one place, God, that who's ever in the need of healing, God, that you would heal right now. God, I just believe who, whoever stands in the need of restoration, that God, you will restore, that you will pick them up where they have fallen. That you will build them up where they've been torn down. God, who's ever in the need of financial blessing. 
that God, we don't know how, and we don't know when, but God, you will meet every one of our financial needs. God, I pray all over the sanctuary that we need you to fill us again, God. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us, oh God, so we can love our neighbor as ourselves. Fill us, oh God, so that our praises will ring out in the streets. That somebody will want to be closer and be drawn to you because of our praise. Fill us, oh God. Oh God. So that we come out of self. And we'll be witnessing warriors to tell a dying world that God is no respect of person. What he has done for me, that he'll do for you. God, right now in the name of Jesus, be in the midst of every prayer circle, oh God. Touch that man, touch that woman, touch that child. God, I pray that you, while they are yet believing, while they are yet praying, while they are yet praising God, that you would draw that group right there together, oh God. Lord, I pray that every prayer that goes up in your name, that you will answer according to your will. Thank you, God, in advance for what you have done, what you're doing, God, and what you will do with this ministry. Now we lift ourselves up to you, God. Pastor and people, pulpit and pew, that you'll do the raising. And God, we consider it done in the name of Jesus. So be it. Amen, amen, and amen.